Offline news as well, providing information on where the supports are moving and trying to spot out those smoke ganks. Yeah, Tidehunter is not going to have a fun time. Um, the Concussive begins. Shell, the Concussive Shot, all up with the Barrel Strike and the Arrow is going to be really, really, really good for picking him off. And of course, Skyrath has always been a problem for offlaners due to his high. Um, efficiency in trading, high damage output, and as a result can really trade with these offlaners. If you look at YYF, he has 8 tangles prepared, so he he knows what's coming for him, and he decides to buy more regen for himself. Ice 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 does a similar build as well. But we'll look at the middle lane here for a little bit. They are camping here, they have smoked up, they want to jump Eternal Envy, and they'll have to do it quick before the first Peep Rave goes. Otherwise, they'll hit level 2, have that waveform available. Right now, he's weak. He has morphed a lot of agility stats, and now Quad comes on in. Is there going to be strength morph? There is, and Chilling Touch going to be easy pickings. Ferrari picks off Eternal Envy here on the mid lane. And a very clever pickup here as well, IG, knowing when to rotate and when Morphling is weakest. So they punish him, and well, EE goes down. We'll see if he continues. Yeah, and a lot of that made possible by Eternal Envy getting the weaker block overall compared to Ferrari. The the wave started off over on the opposing hill. Eternal Envy tried some aggro tricks to pull it back towards himself, but wasn't enough and the supports had the space to loop around. So we were just talking about how important the early support movements were going to be and well, IG strike first. Notably, C9 did manage to get a D ward off uh, on the Observer ward that was spotting them up on their safe lane, so that's going to free them up a little bit to try and make some rotations around the place. But fortunately for RYF, I think he's still going to be able to just go over, maybe sit on the hill near the Ancients, and it won't even necessarily be a waste of time for him to do that and try and spot smoke ganks because he can just stack the Ancients in the meantime. Yeah, Sing Sing, meanwhile, taking a lot of damage, trying to cut the creep wave or delay the creep wave from hitting his tower, but in the end has to really stop doing that because he lost a lot of HP hit points uh, on the top lane there. So Aoi as well as the Tidehunter is going to try and contest the rune for the two minute spawn and we'll see if they do get it. YYF is going to be standing right on top of it and he's going to waste a lot of life points as a result because Clockwork does pick it up uh, on the bottom lane and he runs into the rush pit, picks up a Orb of Venom. Looks like he wants to corner up a support, maybe get a luck kill there. We'll see if he's lucky enough because he does have boots and the two IG supports right now don't. Uh, and Ventral Spirit as well as Ancient Apparition, not two heroes you really want to mess with, especially uh, in the early stages. But he's level 3 now. He has some fancy things he could do. In the middle lane, however, uh, Ferrari and Envy just trading hits there. Envy has to morph into strength, but here comes Bone 7. Gonna hit him once. Yep, that's gonna be the waveform as well. Envy gets a counter kill here on Ferrari, the IG middle laner, and ties up the score 1 and 1. Got his word for a moment there, but now the score is even, and Envy should have the level advantage balanced out again. Speaking more last hits, we have 15 on the Razor safe lane, 13 on Sing Sing's Marana, and Tide Hunter actually taking the opportunity coming here to get TS before leaving uh, the lane back to Ferrari. And IG. I think it's looking pretty okay so far. Are we actually dropping a sentry ward to block up the ancient so that the Tide Hunter will not be able to do his uh, catch up? Later on in this game, YYF uh, gonna have that denied for him. Bone 7 sitting there in his own ancient pit. Having some EXP from the push. Afraid of a dive, I think. That's where you want to position yourself because the smoke could wrap around and catch you unawares. Yeah. Yeah. Middle lane, we have actually Ventral Spirit waiting uh, to jump E again. I don't think he's gonna be too successful with the chilling touch not available. So, we'll see. Oh, here comes Bone 7. And so much of this early game has come down to just little things, especially the support plays. IG chose to invest a sentry ward over at mid to help out with Ferrari, but they missed the D ward on their pull camp. The C9 are just by default pulling ahead, and they also hit the D ward uh, on the ward that was spotting out their movements around the map. So uh, should be a pretty easy experience in gold lead coming out of the C9 supports. Pilai Dai already uh, setting himself up a little stack, so he's looking pretty good. And well, Chuan is still level one, trying to wander the map and get something done, but not being too successful. So I think C9 going to be very happy with how this early game has gone. Yeah, and EE having got a regeneration on himself is going to be pretty happy trading Ferrari here. He did way forward, take a little bit of right click damage, trading with Ferrari, and with the regeneration available, he just heals up the full health and doesn't lose anything. Now he picks up boots and we have bone uh, pilot die in the background. I don't think Ferrari is going to press any issue here. You see Morphling pulling the wave away from his tower uh, so as to not get the creep equilibrium messed up. But in the end he still 
flips up a little bit at the end, but small mistake. Pylai Dai looking to stack up the jungle. Yeah, and, and really nice defensive play from Pylai Dai as well. The ward bottom lane that's blocking at the camp doesn't really see both of the supports. They didn't have a good handle on where Chuan is, and knowing that the Morphling is going to be pivotal to the, the success of this game, he's just going to spend a little bit of time sitting behind him until they have a better idea of what's going on, uh, and then heads off into the jungle. So not a lot of wasted time, but a very safe, secure play coming out of him, and well, it looks like C9 have an interest in applying a bit more pressure to this middle lane. Yeah, they, they don't want to They don't want to have Ferrari hit level 6 too freely, and now the concussive shot will go across a little bit too hasty from EE there, I think, uh, botching up the gank. I think he wanted to soften the uh, Ember Spirit, take off the shield, uh, but as a result, Ferrari took precaution and backed off. And, of course, there's also an Observer Ward there on the Ancient High Ground, so he would know that the gank was coming, and Cloud9 will, will have to back off, a little bit mana short, but still. Highlight that, getting some good EXP, as well as levels. Yeah, we have 500 gold on him, he's working towards that Blink Dagger. Most tanking, you see, get it around 8 minutes, 9 minutes. So, oh, if things are going bad, maybe 10, but the early Blink Dagger does really, really help out in the team fights. And now Faith and YYF looking for an opening, but YYF only level 3, going for 1-on-1 one, one, one on his skill build. Yeah, YYF is really struggling for levels after that D ward on over on the top lane. Hasn't been able to run side pulls, hasn't been able to feel safe at all. Ancients are blocked up as well and the supports. They do have a little stack going on, but I'm not sure if that's been earmarked for him. Well, like, that might actually be for seven. Only level 5, there will be no chain of Ferrari, but Ferrari does have level 6, but he doesn't have a random behind, he gets himself so shot by the Skyrath Mage, and Ferrari will get brought down by Bone 7. One of the mistakes we see uh, from some Ember Spirit players is not dropping a random behind the minute they hit level 6, back at the tower, so the minute anything goes wrong, you can just hit your ultimate button and just bounce back to a safety point. But, well, C9, they get another kill here on Ferrari, they know the hero to shut down this game, and it's not Chuan for sure, he's only level 2, I think just reaching level 3. And uh, meanwhile, top lane... I, I, I mean, a huge stack here from Highlight. I, he he got immediately Ancient Sealed anyway, so uh, there wasn't yeah. a whole lot that he could do, Remnant, <laughs> Remnant down or not. But yeah, Pilot Dai gonna be farming this huge stack. The gold is real and he's gonna enjoy himself here. Checking out his gold for a little bit. Uh, we'll see that he has about 900, so still a little bit away. Still need a couple of camps. Uh, the thing is, the thing I worry about IG is their supports usually rely on uh, catch ups through ancients, through successful ganks, and so far it's not been that way. And Ventral Spirit sits at level 3, 7 minutes in, uh, Ancient Apparition as well. Sing Sing tries, tries, for, tries for an arrow, but doesn't get it to work. And Ember Spirit sitting at 1 and 2, not feeling too comfortable uh, against Eternal Envy, Morphling. And do we see a Midas? Is the question here. We know he likes to go for those kind of Midases uh, when he can get away with it. So middle tower is under attack. we'll see if he decides to do that. But it's going to be an invis rune for him on the bottom lane, and Bone Seven will guard it for him. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Midas on Morphling. I'd, I'd prefer to see him just start immediately working towards some more effective items, especially since I think the one way that C9 are, are liable to lose this is if is if when IG start five manning, uh, they're not really ready to respond. He could maybe go for a slightly greedier build just given that Sing Sing is being fairly conservative over on the safe lane, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. You, you are definitely right when you say that Eternal Envy as a player likes to go for the... Yeah, the he likes to go for Midas build. even if it's 20 minutes in, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it just looks like a complete failure. And we talked about the catch-up mechanism from IG, and they did stack a huge large camp there in the Radiant Jungle, so Tidehunter as well as the Morph... Uh, as well as the as well as the Ember Spirit did share it uh, for a little bit. So Tidehunter just hit level 5, one more level from the Ravage. And once that comes up with the Razor's mech timing, maybe they decide to take a tower. Uh, Duo is about 700 gold away from getting his mechanism. And now yeah, the Tidehunter is going to farm up this large camp here on the Radiant side and probably going to hit level 6. Yeah, the support levels I think are still going to be a bit of a concern for IG. Chuan's trying to soak some uh, over on the off lane right now, but Faith's only having the best of times. And their supports are really vital when they when they start 5 minning or they even start looking for ganks. If if IG are going to be doing a whole lot, it's really going to rely on the supports. And just not getting that D ward down at the start of the game has, has cost them a whole lot. And if they start 5 manning as well, then the supports just won't catch up unless they take successful teamfights. So a lot hangs in the balance right now for IG.
they need to kill stuff. Uh, that's the most important thing. The last hits are not gonna matter that much at this point, but Pilai Dai, he nearly has his Blink Dagger. He just needs a Radiance little bit more gold. Tower. About 100 gold, take a small camp, and Radiance he will have his Blink Dagger. And this could fortified. be really huge with the impending IG Death Ball. We talked about this yesterday when, when we had Empire versus IG. Empire just out Death Ball the um, Invictus Gaming, and with the massive ultimates, and we could see Cloud9 do something similar here with an early Blink Dagger. Sing Sing fires an arrow, looking for a chance, doesn't find it. And Luo is going to be safe from harm. Uh, so now he does have his mechanism. Sand King picks up his Blink Dagger. We'll see if it's as impressive as Zai Sand King this afternoon. Yeah, I think this is part of the problem for IG, that Luo has his farm, he's ready to go, but nobody else is really ready to help him out. So the Razor is left feeling a little bit lost, and the fact that IG's safe lane was a win isn't necessarily translating into anything for them right now, but they do have some smoke supports smoke making yeah. their way down. Yeah, look. Him alone, seven, they see him. Oh, they're gonna cog up right away. Is he gonna go down? There's the question. He probably will. The Ravage goes off, and Bone 7 will fall. So a solo kill with a Ravage. Well, it's not exactly the most value, but Highlight Knight just with his entire empty center. The chains do not go on him, though. The plasma field will, and he will get brought down. 3 and 2. Invictus Gaming bring up the kill score, and well, that was an example of bad play, I think, coming up from Highlight Knight. He does have great games, he does have bad aims, and well, that was not a good. That's great an epicenter, maybe it hit uh, with the mechanism, didn't really catch that as we were looking at a Ravage kill down bottom, but... Radiance middle tower yeah, is uh, under botched attack. kill, and they waste their ultimate as well, 100 seconds on cooldown, but Ravage is still not available at this point, so at this point, so maybe they want to go for a bottom tier one, and try and get some map advantage, or maybe just sit back and farm Envy, what do you have? He's going for Midas. He's okay. definitely going for Midas, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's fine given the pacing of the game right now. They're still holding out of their tier 1, they've got the Sam King Blink Dagger, which may have been a little bit of a question mark had IG been had IG gotten out of the early game any faster, and uh, right now things seem to be going alright. Bone 7's in a pretty good position to be able to start moving around and setting up some ganks if C9 can get any semblance of vision going down. Uh, they did end up losing a ward mid a little bit earlier since there was still an IG Observer that spotted I uh, then end up spotting AUI placing the OBS, so Vision's a little bit lackluster for them at the moment, but I think as soon as they re-establish boards, we'll probably see Bone 7 look to be off the map and, and ganking as much as possible. Yeah, Chuan is still not level 6, just something to note here, Le yeah. uh, 12 minutes in, he's not level 6, he's gotten one kill uh, from a gank, but it's because he's always in the company of other heroes, he's just not finding the levels, and the swap is going to be pretty important uh, when the Mystic Flare does come online, and it already is, so we're waiting for Bone 7 to land a good hook here and secure an easy kill for them. Uh, for the Cloud9 squad. We have Eternal Envy cloning up the Skyrath Mage for safety reasons. And Ferrari opting for the drums first. It's something we see him do a lot as well. Just wants to fight early, uh, apply a lot of pressure, and farm up the Battle Fury maybe later on. So we'll see. Using the Replicate to de ward there on the high ground. Pretty solid play. Sing Sing also going for his drums. What item do you think he should go? Maelstrom, Desolator. Yeah, I think Maelstrom is fine this game, speeds up his farm, he'll probably need to head in towards a BKB at some point, uh, but just being able to hammer out lanes and get a little bit more out of the jungle is is pretty standard. We'll see if he does also end up going for a wand. They know that Sing Sing um, does tend to pick up a lot of early game items on his Mirana, but it, it does definitely vary. Uh, game to game, and right now everybody just kind of sitting fairly statically in their lanes, but uh, this is definitely favoring C9. They're just getting way more efficiency out of their jungle at the moment. I don't know, I don't quite know what this Harpy is doing right now. <laughs> uh, the, I, I don't know, maybe it's just on my screen. Oh, oh yeah, it's flapping around, but I don't like clicking on the Harpies. The portrait kind of scares me. Gives me nightmares, uh, but the thing about the thing about Envy is we mock him taking up that Midas uh, even so late in the game, but it's off of the net worth by a good thousand gold. So granted half of that is the Midas value, but it will change. And once he gets those items up, the Midas really speeds up the level gaining as well. He can be quite a force to be reckoned with, and it's on our Envy. Oh, top lane, we're gonna get caught out here. See, 
Lua gets an arcane ball on him. The mech is not going to save him, and well, four heroes pile on him, and that's going to leave a mark. Three and three on the scoreboard. Cloud Nine tied up. Yeah, and Lua, for all of his great early game farm, just hasn't really been able to do anything with it. I think he's been eagerly telling his team, like, guys, look, I got mech. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go five mana tower. Let's go get something done. But the answer from the supports and from the other lanes has been, look, we we have to wait. Faith is only now just gonna hit his level six, Dyer's gets that ice blast online, and I think Cloud Nine are are really really happy with how things are are going right now. YYF does have his blink dagger up, so IG can look to start moving. But the split push for C9 is already getting barely potent and it's only going to get better as the game drags on. Yeah, this uh, little IG hunting squad Dyer's have taken a huff and puff with the smoke, attack. so they might find a Mirana out, out of position, but they decide that, okay, not the place to be with a tunnel and be pushing middle, and they're going to go split push it. There's an arrow. It's going to land on YYF. No, not really, and YYF is going to sidestep that, and as a result, I think they're going to forfeit this tier 1 tower, or will they? We will see. Zing Zing might be in the wrong place, wrong time. We're going to have to see what happens here. The Ice Blast will land on Aoi. They'll gush him up, they bring him down, it's 4 and 3 And very little actually expended to kill off that support there Radiant's So in the end, a win attack. there for IG, takes a tower, takes a support kill Just slow calculated play here from IG and it slowly advances their lead If you check out the goal graph, it will be thousand in Cloud9's favor actually and XP as well So well, I guess IG haven't been as efficient as we thought I mean, C9 got so much more out of the early game. They stacked up their jungle, the Sand King has fantastic farm, and IG couldn't run a single pull. We've been talking about how starved their supports have been looking this entire game. And Sing Sing also managed to actually get the deny down on that tower, so IG, quite a bit of time invested, Radiant's no real ultimates, not a whole lot of attack. commitment, but still not as much as they'd like to be getting at this point. And we're about to breach the, the 20 minute mark with only one tower taken down for IG. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty good play, like you said, missed the deny, but it's still a tower down, it's still map control lost, and mm -hmm. Cloud9, well, they, they're more often known as Greed9 as well, they love greedy lineups, and IG just don't seem to be punishing them as hard, you know, usually with the Vanfield Spirit, you would imagine they'll push, but they don't have any heroes that have summons, like an Enchantress, like a Prophet, and Apart from killing heroes that are guarding the towers, there's real, there's no surefire way for IG to Radiant's actually take, uh, take Cloud9's tower towers. And it took them quite a while to take the first tier one. Not really uh, what IG are accustomed to uh, doing. And Pylai Dai actually going to smoke up solo to the bottom lane. And he wants to look for a kill here. Sing Radiant's Sing going to bait out a DP reaction. And if it's only one guy, I think they can blow him up with an epicenter burrow strike combo. And there he is. There is the sorry bastard. It's YYF. He is going to pay. And we'll see if the Scorpion starts channeling. I like that. Yeah, there he, have he doesn't a, have a good bones, idea. They have Bone 7 coming in as well, so... If they kill off the Tidehunter, it might be a... I'm looking at the Scorpion right now. Just checking him out. Is he gonna go in? They're waiting a little bit. There is Bone 7 as well. I think they're fearing supports, like you said, in the tree line. And they don't want to push it. But I think it would have been an easy kill with a hook shot, bar strike, epicenter combo. They could have brought him down. And now, Chuan and Faith, they are coming back down to the bottom lane to, to defend that tower. So Sing Sing might want to be a little bit careful. They're taking the long way around, IG. They want to catch Sing Sing off guard, but they will bump into a very angry bone Dyer's 7 out of this career. Is under attack. Just a little bit of reconnaissance here from IG and Ferrari will be joined by his two supports in the middle lane and they will try and take this tower. So now they're camping for the TP and who is it going to be? They drop some aggressive in lane wards and Skyrath looks to be in the neighborhood but now Chuan and there's your hook shot is going to land in onto Faith catches to Chuan is going to get caught out here. Now here comes your epicenter do 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 and they will be both Sent back to the well here. Sing Sing drops the star, star Storm on them and now it's 4 and 5. The two support duo getting caught out there in the middle of the river. Well, they should have known that it would have been warded and with a hero like Clockwork, you really can't uh, afford to do things like that. Sing Sing grabs up his second deny of the game uh, and Eternal Envy still happily farming up top, looking pretty good, extending his goal lead uh, to 9,500. So.
Also, just not very clean play from IG there. They placed their Observer Ward, I believe, in the edge of Tower True Sight Vision, which is 100 more uh, than its attack range. So CC9 were actually able to head over and just clean up that ward that they placed. And another Tower Deny goes the way of C9. They're oh, it's an envy. He did go for the BKB, like you said, and now it's a surprise for Chuan. 10 seconds of yellow Morphling. And nope, he's going to waveform away. So a little bit of a letdown. But then there were four heroes over there. So he did use his 10 second BKB Dyer's charge on that gank, but he will survive it, so there will be no beat Sama today. Uh, the glyph is available, and they will use it, so do they want to contest this, or do they just want to trade, buy some time? Uh, there is Ravage available, so I guess maybe just settle, settle for some trades, give this one up to IG, and now Murana taking up second place, Ferrari falling behind. Yeah, I think with BKB and cooldown, C9 were always going to be giving away that tower, though. They don't... Well, IG don't seem to be responding quite quickly enough to defend this middle tower. They could have brought Ferrari in earlier, though looks like they're still going to be able to, to hang on to it. C9 not pressuring too early. Oh, hookshot in on YYM. He could be in trouble. Might be forced to blow the Ravage. The arrow here from Sing Sing. A perfect follow-up. But this is just space making right now because they don't get anything out of this. They, they spent two TPs on IG. And I think they're going to be pretty happy about that. Hoping to get a panic ravage, I think, from YYF. But YYF, more discipline than that, more patience than that. And Luo, going to come into his jungle and see no one uh, in the neighborhood. So, IG just getting, you know, kited around, led by their nose. Um, laser pointer here and there. And they're just running and scrambling. And they're still behind on the XP, I think. Yeah, falling further behind. Cloud9 now playing, outmaneuvering IG here. 7,500 XP and 6,000 go behind. So Cloud9, their plan seems to be working out for them. The greedy strat from Morphling, the aggressiveness not overly extending uh, against the Invictus Gaming supports and just not giving Vengeful Spirit and Ancient Aspiration the opportunities to make something happen because what, that, that's where the Venge actually really excels at. The early game roaming, mm -hmm. just so powerful in the Venge. Uh, it's a rather tanky support, able to dive towers a little bit. The stun as well, very, very reusable with its low cost. And, well, IG, they're falling slowly but surely behind here. And we'll see what Ferrari can do to tip the skills back in their favor. He's gone for Perseverance. Yeah, so Ferrari has his Battle Fury completed now, so he's going to be able to deal Radiant's with the split push pretty effectively and still attack. join his team. That is the one strength of the Ember Spirit that we haven't really talked about this game, just being able to leave a remnant uh, wherever they're sieging a tower and still come back and handle uh, whoever on C9. But that's also something that C9 are aware of and will likely be looking to punish with Pylai Dai being in position or uh, something like a Moonlight Shadow, so always going to have to keep an eye out for that. And, IG, well, power strike mid lane for Pylai Dai, but not going to catch faith there. But for C9, I think the this is just quintessential. We talked about it before the draft even started, that it was going to be, is Cloud9's keep away game strong enough to deal with the IG 5 man? And so far, the answer has been a really resounding yes. Yeah, they, they just avoid the IG 5 man. They just run around them Radiant's and get the farm. And before you know it, you have a really, really Radiant fat morphling that can just one shot fire. your here's your support, and now here comes the Barrel Strike here from Paladine. Just a zoning Barrel Strike. Harasses back to creep, harasses the Razor, brings down the creep wave, and Radiant's just making some space, making attack. supports, react once again. And I think Cloud9 are playing the clever game right now. Hookshot comes in on Ferrari. Does he have a remnant? Is the question. He gets shut up by the Skyra once again. The Mystic Flare goes on his head. YYF, all the TPs come in, and once again you see Invictus Gaming. Bring in supports for nothing, and Cloud9 get away with an easy kill. Yep. Cloud9 are dictating the pace of this game 100%. I mean, a great example of it was, like you said, they made in TP's bottom lane by hook shutting in on top of YYF. They're just making all of the space in the world right now for Envy to continue farming up, for Sing Sing to continue farming up, and... Radiance top Luo, he's picked up a BKB, but I feel like we just haven't Radiance seen the Razor at fallen. all this game, and the first pick is coming back to bite IG a little bit here. Well, Luo's in his own happy town right now. Chon gets hit by an arrow from Sing Sing, but I don't think he can commit here. So, well, Earn of Shadows and a Boots of Speed. Like we said, Venture Spirit does have really good stat gain, and she's a pretty resilient support in the early to mid stages of the game, but once Sing Sing gets a couple items up, what is he gonna get? He's going for a Yasha Drums, this is the speed mobility Marana built. Uh, we'll see him pick up a damage item, maybe a Millstrom, that's later, later on. And... Top tower is under we'll start to do more damage then. 
But the Skyros is really working out here so far. And <laughs> well, Eternal Envy with the style points waits forward. So the depth is strike to the ancient apparition this off style. Pilot die looking towards the sank uh, looking towards the razor here. He pings him out. Is there anyone uh, looking to gank him? It's morphling, but he's really far away. Uh, Envy does actually have enough for a shotgun now, so while we saw a little bit of harassment on Faith on top lane, that's very quickly gonna become dead ancient apparition once that's online and IG, I think they they really wish that they'd had a better farming hero than the Razor. They're looking at bottom of this Oh, here comes the epicenter. It will here and the Mystic Flare as well. BKB, yeah, panic. BKB, instant TP out, and they'll try and right click him. Oh, Bone Seven just short of that, missing on a stationary target. Well, he's allowed to miss sometimes, and will not secure that kill for Cloud Nine. But it does blow 10 second BKB on the Razor. So a lot of ultimates were used for that. The Mystic Flare, not too big a loss, but the epicenter was, and it was almost a big kill there. Meanwhile, IG spend this time beat up some golems. And try and get some levels on their supports. Faith, we'll see how his farm is going. Gone for the double brazers. The good old, I need to survive this game strat. Uh, not rushing any academics and all settling just for raw stats. On um, Luo, needs to be careful this time around. There's no BKB. Okay, he's, he's gonna back off to the tower. And I was just about to say that the only permanent impact of that gank was the BKB really wearing down by one second and, and Luo losing some farming time. C9, again, are just in complete control of this game right now they're dictating when fights happen when fights don't happen and it's it, it's really nice to watch honestly this is this is c9 at their best yeah round of applause for pilot dice sanking average sanking cs by 25 minutes 47 his 107 i think i'm sorry k-pop if i botched your stats but it's around that level but yeah that was a really cool set right there pilot dice farming hard and farming fast he has a veil of discord now double damage so the next fight can be really short for IG if they are not in the right position. Yeah, and Ferrari, interestingly enough, looks Rush like he's time. just going straight towards Daedalus, so or straight towards Crit at the moment. So that Veil of Discord could do quite a bit of work over. Yeah, the Battle Fury Daedalus is um, mathematically most uh, efficient damage output, I think, for a Ember Spirit. And I think IG know what's up. We'll probably have to zoom out here on the big screen. And oh, YYF, actually they didn't see this, they just were walking by for a little bit of a game. Mystic Flag goes onto Chuan, he evaporates. And 4 to 7 is the score now. The rest of IG scramble for the hills and they will pour out the Razor and YYF staying in the trees. Yeah, and he will TP out as well. Yeah. Uh, on the topic of Ember Spirit builds, I think a lot of it depends on how stacked up the targets are, and there's a lot of yeah. assumptions that go into the it. The angle where the slight actually randoms yeah. on, yeah. It's a, it's a very RNG kind of style, but still, I think you can not really go wrong with a Daedalus. Uh, yeah. You can go something clowny like a Scotty once in a while, slow the entire team, death later as well, uh, negative minus six and everyone. It'll be cute, but um, I think Daedalus is a safe choice here, and Ferrari. Well, we won't question his plays. Yeah. He's uh, one of the best Ember Spirits this tournament, if not the only one. The only reason I breached the topic is because Ferrari is a player that I think knows exactly when he needs to go BKB on his Ember Spirit. There are some games where they're even doing really, really well and looking to push up onto the high ground, and he's only got a Battle Fury, and he'll just immediately go BKB, grab it, and then they'll look to close out the game. But I think the Crystalis really signals that it signals that IG aren't in control of this game. They're not in a position where he can just get a BKB and go and finish things. And he's also, it's also going to be really important that he gets a lot of damage. Like we were talking about, I don't think the Razor is going to be doing a heck of a lot for yeah. IG. Who yeah, I feel that teams have been picking Razor just because Razor. And Razor is a hero that works as an anti-carry. You need something to... You need to be able to drain the target's damage and then use it for your own. You need to tank up in the fight. But... On the other hand, with the way Cloud9 are playing, they are just doing this kiting style of play. And you don't have something like a Void or a Spectre because you pick Luo as your Razor, your tank. And because of that, you don't have anyone to jump into fights. So if people avoid fights, you really find it hard to initiate on them. And Ferrari, I think he should be going for BKB. Um... Yeah, I mean, he, I think he needs to go BKB as soon as C9 actually starts to mobilize. Silence in every fight, yeah. he just dies. So, I feel that the BKB choice would be better. Yeah, we talked about whether crit was the right choice. I think BKB first, maybe the better option. 
Crit is still definitely a, a nice farm improvement, and I, I think I agree with the build, but he he is going to have to go BKB uh, eventually. But, and right now the team is actually making a lot of space for him to get farmed, so I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. YYF is just working straight in towards a refresher orb, uh, which is always going to be nice. I think IG, for the most part, are just preparing for a long game here. Something that we have always said about drafts with Razor is that it's not always the worst if the game drags on, since eventually Eventually you can farm up Ag's Refresher, and if you win any semblance of a fight on your side of the map, you can quite easily barrel down a lane uh, and take out a lane of Rax and still be, still be in it. And yeah, oh, and IG, we, we have said this, apart from the Ventral Spirit, they don't have any push. It's not their spell. The death ball is good, but the death ball only works if hero dies. And no, no heroes are dying, you can't push towers, Razor doesn't do any damage when there are no heroes to drain from, and... Oh, you just as you just get a lot of underlevel supports. You see the ancient apparition sitting at 2,000 net worth. Chuan himself, a starved man, 3,300. So, it's not a game I think Chuan enjoys, for sure. He's going for four stuff, but it's still very little uh, compared to Envy's 15,000 net worth here. So this is one of those kind of stellar Cloud9 games that make you think they are really good. And then there's the there are the other games that they play. So. Cloud9 looking good if they keep this up in the tournament. They still need a couple of wins to secure some uh, good positions on the ranking. But the gold graph has started to taper off a little bit. It's been hovering around 8,000. Not gone any deeper. The XP as well. And IG, they need to step up. I mean, it's little Envy is getting away with everything. He's got a D blade and very soon he'll be reaching burning levels of farm. Yeah, and I think another thing that you could pin a lot of this game on for IG is just the two cores that they opened the draft with. It it gave away a lot of their strategy immediately, and to remind everybody, they opened with Razor as the first pick, and then after the response from C9, which is Skyrath Mage and Mirana, they went straight into Tidehunter. And while we know that IG have been running primarily five many strategies in this tournament, it really made space for C9 to end up with the draft uh, that they have. And maybe had IG gone for a support, kept things a little bit more ambiguous, then they could have got away with the, the five man, but not the case. And this time around, they're going to have to play C9's game and, and drag it out a little bit. But we do have a Daedalus now up for Ferrari, so things are still looking okay, I think. Cloud9 yeah, are known to throw games. Uh, Occasionally, yes. Yeah, when they, they get a little bit too excited. Yeah, guys, we won this! And then they jump in and IG just out-execute them, and you can see a huge Ravage Ice Blast and Luo just mopping up. So, have to be really careful going into an engagement is always dangerous against the Chinese teams. I think Bulba did do an interview once. He said it's so difficult to breach a Chinese base. So <laughs> Cloud9 may take the tier 2s here, but breaching high ground will be the real test. Uh, of course, if Eternal Envy can always just sit back and farm, his, farm the hell out of the map and get 6 slotted to deal with them, but... They could, I think they could take a really convincing fight at this point, but just be a little bit careful Radiant's and top tower is not under overextend. Yeah, I, I think this Aegis is probably only going to be height. a few tier 2s, and they probably won't look to take high ground until they've picked up a BKB on, on sixing, which could take a little while. Though he does have the Maelstrom up now, so farm speed is definitely picking up. Yeah, even the Rana has got, uh, gotten himself a Maelstrom, Mantis style. The Mantis style is always nice. Uh, whether or not to deal with debuffs like slows. Uh, I think it does remove the shackles from the Ember Spirit. It could also be used for split push and now they smoke up their Moonlight Shadow as well. Luo could be caught out here. That's the thing. The Bow Strike, the Mystic Flare immediately by the counter initiation from YYF. The Refresher, Revit, definitely not expected here. But the Aegis will be spent. It's only two kill, one kill and an Aegis for a double Ravage. And well, Cloud9 sees this and is like, okay, fine, we are going in. We are going to take your tier 2 towers now that your big ultimates are down. Thank you very much. And if Aegis wasn't there, I think it would have been a huge disaster. But why we have very quick on the uptake? Luo, well, he's not getting up from Radiant's that. Bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, and if he'd been any faster on the trigger there, then that could have... Oh, I don't know if Luo would have survived. He was already Mystic Flared uh, and Ethereal Bladed fallen. at that point, but... C9 will see how far they push this. They are pushing, of course, into an Ember Spirit, so this is going to be a little bit difficult. But I think they still want to have maybe a bit more of a bit more of a look around here. We'll have to see. You know, I don't know. I just feel that um, IG just lose power when it comes to nighttime. 
Uh, well, to the E thing. Oh, there's a Ferrari right here. On to Ferrari here. He takes an arrow as well, I think. Yep, does he take an arrow? Yeah, he does take an arrow. Could have gone for it, but Pilot Die decides to feed instead. So it's 6 and 8. Pilot Die will spend 50 seconds on the sidelines. A little bit too over anxious, too over eager there. And well, none of his teammates were in position to capitalize off that barrel strike. It was a good one. It stunned him before the shield was brought up. Uh, but still, it was not enough. And Cloud9 will have to abandon their siege on the high ground. Maybe they sit back, wait for the next rush. I mean, after all, they are die aside. Yeah, there's no incentive for C9 right now to rush things at all. They've still got well, plenty of farm to pick up on Eternal Envy. Yes, and on Sing Sing, they're still controlling the map. Um, IG, do we see a gem just yet? Interestingly enough, no gem for either team. Um, Aoi and, might be in trouble at top. Yeah. Yeah, Aoi's gonna be in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, he is in a world. He's gonna be in a world, but the Icebox is gonna miss. That is at least gonna be going. Aoi. Ouch! No, no, he got wrecked right there. The crit uh, coming up from Ferrari. Not sure if he really needed it. I guess you could go for a little bit of a silence concussive four star for ATP. But, well, the crit made sure that none of that happened. And Ferrari will snag up an easy kill there on Aoi. Had a lucky in this rune. But. Meanwhile, Envy continues to be really fat uh, with his Scotty, his Eternal, uh, well, Eternal Blade, and Bench still not having any four staff money. Ferrari, the only hope here for IG, it seems. Yeah, and well, talking about the, him being the only hope, he's definitely going to be the only Dyer's source of damage. Tower. Luo is, is heading in towards a heart right now, so it looks like he's just going to be try trying to tank up uh, on the front lines, not going for that pushing build that we mentioned a little bit earlier and seeing that and I think well IG discussing as a team Ferrari is actually just going to start heading straight in towards another battle fury so if he ever gets caught out in these fights then he uh, I, IG are I, IG have lost but you have to trust in in Ferrari's positioning and I mean, before the nerfs to Ember Spirit, we saw this double, triple Battle Fury thing uh, on for, on Ember Spirits a lot, mm -hmm. where they just chop down creep waves and just punish bad positioning. And IG looking to get some freebies here in the Dire Jungle. They go uh, hunt in, and YYF, he has the double Kraken. And he's about to hit level 16, though. Not sure he wants to do it now. I think Cloud9 could be looking at a very, very big loss here. See, he is going to pop his BKB in time, but tanking does it as well. The Ravage completely shivered right there. Misses both. It only gets a Skyra once again. The Sand King with a timely BKB usage there will save himself the trouble. But a hook shot here from Boat 7. Downtown locks him down. Ferrari will not be TPing out of this nonsense. But there's Sing Sing. He is going to be trying by Luo. Facing the external envy on the other side of the map. Fate gets brought down by Sing Sing. Ferrari, he still has a remnant. But will he be able to escape in time? He has no more TPs. He gets a crit on Sing Sing. But now the Rocket Flare is going to scout him out. Ferrari, full panic mode. Going for a little bit of a picnic in the jungle. Don't say Seven, shoot a rocket flare, you know he's there. Ferrari hiding in the trees. He'll get barrel strike. There's your build discord. And 811 is the score. IG loses three heroes there and Ferrari. Well, we said about that no BKB thing and well, it did show it kind of punished him in that fight and YYF has not been playing a good type hunter. A little bit too cool with the, the Ravages, you know. Oh guys, I got double Ravage! Just jams it, hits the refresh without seeing and drops Radiant's the second one. I don't think you fallen. should do that. You should actually really uh, watch the, the battlefield and see if you really needed that follow-up Ravage. So, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame YYF for that mishap. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it was a super split-up fight for IG and it, I think a lot of it shows some frustration about the way that the game is playing out. They had a plan focused around the early game and getting an advantage and being able to execute on that and C9 have just been holding them at arm's length this entire time. So they go for a big play but now they're going to lose a lot on the swing back end. Well we've got that BKB up on Sing Sing so looks like C9 is ready to start pressure pretty aggressively though Ravages are down for at least 50 seconds so he may not need it. Also good to note it's on Envy. He's now 22,000 in net worth. He is Run in the bank right now, and very, very tanky, very, 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 very far. Could go for a butterfly as a result. Oh, my life die gets a, gets a hit on C once again. The BKB comes out from the Razor. It's on Envy dropping low, still not hit by an Ice Blast, so he can't actually morph himself to safety. Lu Wall once again being the target of the Sand King. Uh, Sand King Skyrath combo doesn't die there, but uses another BKB charge for no good reason. And it's on Envy somehow gets the tower lasted. Yeah, and Summer we trust.
Yeah, and C9 just going to back off safely, wait around for Roshan to respawn, which is going to happen in about a minute's time. And IG left to continue trying to scrape whatever farm they can uh, over in their little corner. They are down 15k gold, 10k experience, and well, C9 just continue to starve them out. And again, the last hope for IG is pretty much all on Ferrari. does have a second Battle Fury up now, so maybe they have a little bit of a chance, but... You know that C9 are going to be playing this, well, hopefully really disciplined uh, in, in approaching the base and not having a bunch of heroes clustered up near creep waves. Well, not only for the Slide of Fist cleave, but also for the Ravages, of course. Yeah, but IG are definitely not out of this just yet. They are very well known for their teamfight execution, so... And high ground defense. Yeah. High ground defense is always a problem, but... EE's got the perfect item for this, he's got the Manta style, he can just morph up really high agility illusions and just send them up the hill, take the tier 3s, slowly but surely. Uh, it would be kind of painful for IG, I think the, um, that's going to be the best course of action here from Cloud9. Risk free, doesn't really have to deal with all the big ultimates there, EE just walking past the DD rune, nope, got to cl claim his bottle before going for it, and Roshan has respawned, so... And Envy always known for keeping track of these DDs and trying to make big plays happen with them. And, oh, well, Roshan's respawned. I don't think they've scattered it out, but looks like they want to try and make a play happen uh, with this double damage. So, action on the way. All right. Uh, a big smoke up here from Cloud9. Oh, they scouted. <laughs> Are they going to go for it, though? It's it's double damage. Either they can have the double damage or they can have the Aegis. And looks like the call's yeah, been made it, to it, just go fight. It could be big. And the fact they're all missing... It does tell IG two things that they're either ganking or taking Roshan. And if IG think it's Roshan, they are going to regroup around the pit now. And they could be in a lot of trouble if Cloud9 gets a perfect wrap on them. There's going to be a neutral creep. It's damage. They know it's there. The statue you want once again is always blue. Wall, but the YYF comes to initiation, but it doesn't do anything at all. The BKB, the Kraken hits nothing. And Sing Sing, Eternal Envy just do mop up here. Ferrari trying his best to run away, but Sing Sing strafes him down with the right click. He will go down. Eternal Envy with the double damage. 25 viewers receiving prizes for multi kills and 10 to 16 IG get mopped up. Five heroes down. Sand King and Clockwork will be the trades here, but Radiant's Cloud9 look to take Rex here. No, nope. turns out the Cloud9 keep away was the answer to the IG 5 man, and with that, the game isn't quite over just yet, but uh, it's. Certainly feels, uh, it certainly feels like it would be very difficult for C9 to lose from this position. And thinking back, so much of it just came down to how the early game played out. The IG supports and the IG safeliner were just never able to really get anything done. And oh, a really oh, nicely planned out draft from C9. Envy going for seconds. Almost still heroes well, dead on IG. It really also shows the weakness of Tidehunter. BKBs. Everyone can pull out just bought a BKB. And he doesn't even mind dying now, maybe. Nope, just kidding. Uh, he's gonna back off. Not gonna pull any funny stuff and... Dyer's top well, tower is under we? attack. What items do he, does he have? He's gone for the Gold Scepter, 4 staff, so uh, purely support Skyrath, no Atos to add on. I don't think he need it. They have really mobile heroes on Cloud9 as well. Chuan finally getting his 4 staff, but I, I really feel bad for YYF. I think that was his best chance to get a good Ravage off up there uh, in the Dyer Dyer's jungle. But after that attack. fight, Cloud9 settled back down, got all their BKBs, and the only one without BKB is Aoi. And he just stayed clear out of the range because Skyrath is just such a long range support Dyer's that he doesn't need to be in the battlefield. YYF's reactions has been really on the mark, but it's just that there are too many BKBs. He, his ultimate does nothing. A little bit surprised to see C9 not just back off, re-establish lane control, get some wards up around Roshan and take it. Uh, as you said, Envy instead just went for another tier 3, but I think at this point they, they know that they have this game pretty much in the bag. Um, well, still another 30 seconds yeah. or so before Double Ravage is going to be back up, so looks like they're going to be able to head into the pit anyway. Though I think they'd like a bit more vision Maybe they just want to use solo Ravages for kills. You know, you, you never know. And now they're going in for Roshan, hopefully Envy doesn't waste his illusions, they're just going to tank up here. And he's going to go for the Rosh, so the Aegis here is going to make it really difficult for IG to defend. Ventral Spirit and Ancient Apparition. Well, Ancient Apparition does have an ultimate, but Venge at this point, she's just there for the aura, I feel. The swap as well, but... I mean, the fight's ended so fast that swaps are not necessary. I mean, it's not only Envy laying down the herd, it's Sing Sing as well, who has gotten up a Mjolnir, uh, Manta style, and just firing away. No need for draw.
Yeah. I, I mean, it's an important point to raise as well that the fights have been ending so quickly because Ferrari is relying on things being dragged out at least a little bit to be able to get multiple sites of fist off. And well, the survivability on Luo just turns out to not be enough. He's got 2.8k hit points and 17 armor, but C9 are just shredding him. We have a slot queue Ross and clockwork as well, so yeah, strength is the word here. And C9. Ferrari doesn't have buyback for some reason, and now Envy as well, Ferrari 1-on-1 -on duel, nope, Ferrari backs off, uh, unable to stare EE in the eye, and the Morphling will continue farming, exerting dominance here on the top lane, 4,300 gold on him. So it's a great game when Eternal Envy carries without, without fault, and we have Razor actually getting a heart of Terrah, he's very tanky, and yet unable to deal with the burst. We're forgetting the bonus damage from Ancient Seal, Veil of Discord, Epicenter, and Mystic Flare. There's just so much damage that you just wonder if it's worth it actually getting more health for just trying to not get hit by it. Maybe they go for Blade Mill. And I mean, he, he's tanky, but C9 just don't really care about him at all. There's, there's very little reason to focus him. When they do focus him, he just dies in a couple of seconds anyway, so... I feel sad for him. He's always yeah, the guy. It's Lua. like a, in a zombie game, you're the last guy down the stairs and you're the one getting pulled. But... Well, Nine's execution has been pristine this game. I, I have very little complaints apart from the occasional highlight die feats, but apart from that, it's really, really been good. And Cloud9 looking to pressure the tier 3s once again, and they could very well be putting IG on their last breath here, but we'll see. Cool. Gotta be in the front lines once again, he's the tank after all, and YYF is the follow-up Ravager, but... I don't know, it's kind of sad when your refresher Ravage doesn't have any effect. Yeah, it's even sadder for IG as well that they actually don't have any smokes left. Normally in this kind of position, you'd be looking to smoke the, the Tide Hunter. The stress has been real, man. They needed to puff a few extra packs. Yeah, you'd, normally in this kind of position, you'd be looking to send the Tide Hunter around the side by himself, smoked up, or looking to just hide in the back so that C9 can't get a good idea of where he is, and they can't oh, jump no, in with the But yeah, C9 just going to smoke themselves and actually just switch lanes. So IG can have hope. There goes your Ravage! It's not on Envy. He doesn't have the time. He gets Ravage twice, and he will go down. But there is your agent. Of the immortal, things can get caught out here, but here comes the big bad scorpion with the epicenter. There's your ventral spirit taking a fall, and Cloud9 just brute forcing their way to take a second wreck. But big crits bring down now in 2000. C gets shotgun right in the back there. Eternal Envy will look away from his falling corpse, and it's 11 to 18. Not a lot of kills on the board, but Cloud9 they take two sets of wrecks. And they're looking pretty fine here. 21,000 IG fans gonna be really disappointed. Dan, IG still refusing to tap out, which is, to me, uh, honestly a little bit surprising. Fights have not, I don't think there's even been a glimmer of hope uh, in some of these recent fights, but I think you do have to admire the persistence of a team that refuses to ever say die, though C9 probably will be I like pretty soon. Being caught out, Barrow Strike, maybe saves his life, but the Ember Shield making it kind of impossible to blink. And here comes the Ice Blast, he is done so. And I, I think they didn't clear the gem, so Envy didn't have space for the gem, so... Yeah, IG Luo dropped back. it right by the tier 4 towers. Yeah, IG got back from the engine apparition. But yeah, I think Chuan must be pretty frustrated playing a Ventral Spirit this game. It's a hero that doesn't do well when falling behind. Uh, you only die, you become a martyr, give out that negative aura, that's about it. Yeah, and something that IG have actually been kind of good about in some of their other games this tournament is picking up a support that has the potential to scale. We've seen Chuan on Mirana, I think we've seen a couple of Alchemist games out of him as yeah. well. And, ag and against some of these teams like Cloud9 that love to drag the game out, that's where IG have found their fourth core and their ability to kind of take things a little bit towards the late game. But this game, as we've kind of yeah. harped on a little bit, they, they didn't look at the offense. Man, oh, this man. guy is such a troll, but he should really just look out now. He does. And well, he just he's just stalling it right right now at this point. IG uh, just getting toyed with. Uh, there's no way to play up against the Ikami when he's like that. Well, Raper, Rapier oh, on Ferrari. Rapier hype. We get 27 viewers receiving a prize for that, and this could be a turning point for IG. You never know. There could be some nasty, nasty fights. Does Eternal Envy try and end it now? He has to pick up a butterfly, so he's not going for any more health. So he. Could 
could technically go down to a Daedalus crit uh, at the right time. And the earlier Ravage from YYF I think was really good, caught the Eternal Envy, but unfortunately two Ravages were needed for that one Aegis life. And they finally have a restock on Smokes. And Cloud9, they might be facing IG's last attack here. It's like IG just going all in. There's not going to be yeah. any Mega Creeps here. If they win this fight, they're looking to just continue it's death balling down mid twos, and ending man. the game. It's going to yeah. be tough. It's, it's going to be a very, very close fight for IG. They'll have to be perfect in execution. We'll check out the items one more last time. A casual chain mail for Razor, feeling uh, the untankiness of himself. Uh, Ancient Apparition, very far behind on that Arcanum Scepter, so we'll not be having it this fight. There's a full stuff on Tron, but that's about it. And there's smoke are not gonna work out. Cloud9 playing super safe and I know there's this joke running around Envy doesn't like to play uh, pick up BKB but he picked it up right away at the start here uh, in this game. So yeah and, and Cloud9 like we talked about there's no reason to risk anything at this point they get a really clear indication that IG are making some kind of play with a Razor really aggressively pushing down mid and nobody take or well, nobody taking care of the top lane. Oh look what EE's doing. Oh, He's man. doing what EE does, and he is going to just waltz on in. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Running out of his replicate time, doesn't want to risk anything, and he's playing it smart. I mean, when there's so much money on the line, I think if you get into the top eight, you get 500,000 guaranteed for your team, 100,000 per player, and that's nearly a year's worth of salary uh, for some people, and it's it's amazingly huge. We're not even talking about first place here. We're just talking about that eighth place prize pool, 500,000 and Cloud9 wants to secure every single uh, chance of getting in and IG, arguably one of the toughest opponents um, remaining left for them so they take out IG here they have a pretty good chance against their following matchups and they might actually even get seeded very well into phase 3 uh, coming up in the next few days IG, like we said, could take this loss uh, they, just won't, they just won't get that top 2 placing now uh, as a result but they still should be fine. Yeah, IG is still going to be okay, and like you said, this might put them out of contention for top two. And it, it, it's been a day of, of underdogs taking wins. We've had a bunch of teams continuing to climb their way out of the, the bottom six, and the result of this match could lead us into an even more interesting tiebreak scenario. So. It'll be, it'll be worth it to, to keep an eye on that, and I hope that somebody has, well, maybe by the end of the day we'll, we'll see all of the theory crafting as to our, our worst case scenario for the tiebreakers, but I, I don't even want to call it a worst, I don't want to call I, it a worst that, case that, scenario. I know um, that the chat, some of the chat was talking about nine way tie, I, I don't know if that's a, that's a thing, I, I think it might be a scheduling nightmare. It'll be fun, we have more games to cast, uh, more some games teams the better. might bounce back. Uh, I don't know about Arrow, but I think maybe Mouse, Fnatic might have a second breath of life. Uh, we'll see, but right now Cloud9 just dragging it out, they're cruising. Um, looking to close this one out cleanly and smoothly, and Ferrari gets to hold on to that rapier, maybe um, sign up for some... Up for another one if he ever gets the gold. So he's got about 2,000 gold right now. Eternal Envy gets a haste rune. He has his replicate ready and he's gonna do the old backdoor. It's something like the Clint Chen setback. He bashes away the melee rack. BKB gets crit once, he says. Okay, that's not working out too well. And he just bounces away. Uh, it does a little bit of damage. I think he should have gone for the range one first, but. It's okay, he can afford to do this. Uh, although the BKB charges are not as freely expendable, uh, I'm sure he's loaded in gold right now. Mm -hmm. So, no problem at all. He still has buyback, and even if it goes awry, he can uh, easily buy back, total a little bit, and with the huge map control on their side. Yeah, and unfortunately for C9, it's going to be a pretty late Roshan respawn here, so they're going to keep scouting things out, uh, unless you're going to stay in this stalemate at least for a little bit. And as you raised the point earlier, that was actually IG's last smoke for a bit, so no real room for them to be making any kind of plays outside of their base, and Envy has shown that he is more than ready uh, to just jump their racks if, they, if, if they're ever caught away from home. Yeah, the... I don't know, it's like, it's a EE -E thing to do, I think, at this point. It, like, yeah. we, like we said, it, at MLG, I think they did something like that. They had the clings blink in uh, with the Chen sand back, and they just strafed down the Rexes one by one. And if you look at buyback status, all of them coming back up. And 
the only two unable to buy back are Venge and AA, at, at which this point they're not really that um, big heroes to worry about anyway. So long the AA gets off his Ice Blast, then Venge swapped. Well, they're not that useful in the fight anymore. And if they have buyback at this point, I think the fight's already lost. Well, we have a hex completed for YYF, so there's a chance that he could tide. blink in, hex one, ravage, refresh, hex another, ravage again. Yeah, we could see some really big, uh, big ones this one, uh, this game. But Ferrari, he's giving, he's been given a lot of time to farm up his second rapier. So maybe he gets that. Maybe he goes for a second crit, second battle, a uh, third battle fury. Love to see how that goes. Rod of Aoi, no Rod of Aoi for Aoi, and surprisingly, because every other Skyrath I think has nearly uh, has bought this item, and now Roshan respawns, and Eternal Envy is gonna grab himself an Aegis. And with this, well, I, I don't even know if C9 will change what they're doing all that much. I think Envy might just have somebody sit top lane, make sure the backdoor protection is disabled by the creep wave, and look to continue just jumping in bot, getting some more damage down on these racks. This time around, Glyph is not available for IG, so I don't even know if they're going to be able to hang on here. Though, as you pointed out, there is only a 5 second BKB remaining on Eternal Envy, and it looks like C9 He's gonna are just going to go all in. I, I don't know about him getting cheese. I think he should get Aegis and Nirana cheese. Oh, Luo! He does dodge the burst right there. He pops his BKB by the square off. The Hexes, where the Hexes? All the BKBs in the world by Eternal Envy. Like I said, getting himself caught out, and he goes down, but here comes a big epicenter, brings down the Razor. Ferrari is on a killing spree, though. Don't mess around with the Rapier. It is dangerous stuff. And now Tron swaps out Highlight Eye. Sand King getting himself Caught out. He's gonna get chopped down, sushi, by the by the mid player by G and Cloud9 facing disaster. 55 minutes into the game, Envy does want to blow his buyback, having some great uh, great patience there. But that was not a fight they wanted to take. Yeah, it looks like C9 did not see the fact that YYF had a hex available. I think otherwise. Uh, Envy would have been a little bit more proactive with his BKB. If you think about all of the other threats that he needs to BKB, pretty much just the Ventral Spirit Stun and the Ravage, they're both things that he'll have time to dodge, but the Instant Hex was really what caught him off guard and... Well, looks like C9... No, yeah. I think Morphling needed to hold the Aegis, because the past yeah. two fights worked out for them because he had Aegis. He got hit by Ice Blast, it didn't matter, he just died and came back again. No more Ice Blast, but if you get hit by the Ice Blast and you try to cheese, you only get full mana. Yeah. So that's the, the main problem. I think had there not been the Hex, then I think their item distribution is is just fine here. But the, that was the oh one factor boy. that they couldn't account for. And well, double rapier time. Oh IG boy. going all Cloud in. Cloud 9. We talked about them getting this game in the bag, but it's now a thousand damage on that Ember Spirit. Islands in all things, it's coming to you this summer. And Cloud 9. Paradise might be coming to an end if they fight wrongly the next one. It's and not gonna be it's not gonna be pretty. Oh boy. Deciding what they're gonna do here. They're, they're all standing around looking a little bit lost. Creep wave gets cleared out. Momentum on bottom and top lane. If we could get a stat okay from K-pop, when was the last time a rapier purchase managed to uh, managed to give the team a comeback from a multiple rexes down? It'll be good to know. But I think Amber Spirit, you can't ask for anything more uh, than two rapiers, two battle furies, and Daedalus. Maybe we swap out the last pair of boots, be manly, grab up three rapiers, but. I don't know, it's looking pretty nasty. It, it, it just got exciting, at the very least. If Luo doesn't just feed here. But he's just gonna be fine, I think. No real way to determine that with current technology. Well, I guess. Oh, there you go. Oh, I guess not then. I mean, thanks for trying anyway, but it is a... Uh, IG and Cloud9. Yep. Cloud9 looking strong, IG looking to be losing there and then they pick up two rapiers after one throw cloud nine look kind of be in the danger zone again maybe wait for the next ages i don't know but at this point it felt like they wasted time they're wasting some time even if they get the win it was unnecessary to tire themselves out is this their last game for today um i will have a very quick look no, they still have a game against Vici actually yeah. to, to round out 
everything in, in the final round. So they will have a break, at least between uh, this round completing is a round in between, but T9 do have another match coming up. All right, so they're not only draining themselves, they're draining IG as well. IG do have a game um, after the Na'Vi set, so I think IG will have more rest actually um, after this game. They will be playing up again against Na'Vi. Na'Vi, yeah, Na'Vi EU, and that will be the TI2 rematch. But IG look to be on the rocks. We'll see if the Ferrari double rapier can bring them back. Pilot die. Uh, what's he got now? He's still not got an Aghanim Scepter. I think the damage scaling is not too effective at this point. He's got a Plate Mill, maybe going for a Shiva's God, and add more Magical Burst to it. Sing Sing Ages, is it timing out? We'll check the Rosh Pit right now. It's about... A minute oh. and 20 seconds? A minute and 20 seconds, okay. So it's about a minute and 20 seconds. I, I still cannot, for the life of me, one, uh, understand why it's not a digital clock, but... Yeah, it's about hitting the owl mark, and we're starting to see a little bit of a stalemate. I think Cloud9 has seen this double rapier here, and the panic is gonna, the heart's gonna start thumping. Are we gonna get really gonna get wiped out here by double rapiers? And we'll see, more fling. Do you happen to know what happened to the cheese for C9? I think, I know that Envy dropped it and he pinged it, but I don't know what he did with it, so. At, at the moment, it looks like he's just trying to farm up BOT and buyback, so he's ready to have two lives, but uh, I can't for the life of me figure out where this um, where this cheese has gone. It looks like Envy's actually going to be picking up a second BKB, so if he wants to farm up BOT buyback, uh, then they're going to have to wait around a little bit longer. It looks like they might want to get their hands I also wonder images. why he has stopped uh, doing his Rex harassment, but I guess it's business now. It's a it's a little bit dangerous. I mean, he could he could go in for a couple of seconds with his BKB, but now that the hex is online, it, it could be trouble. And I don't know. I guess he is just outside of range of being killed by one side of fist, but I don't think he wants to risk anything at this point. I mean, as much as Envy, I think Love is making the well, let's call them cute plays and you know trying to close up the game in the safest way possible, kind of by himself. There's no there's no way that he's going to risk his team this match at, at this stage, especially we, we talked about how important this game is for both of these two teams in the draft and at multiple stages throughout this game. Got to be Travels for Envy, he's just holding on to it for now. Uh, yeah, Travels he, buyback. He will probably. not uh, want to lose his buyback there. But yeah, so it's just going to be to and fro. Creeps dying, so we might have to start naming some creeps uh, that have stuck around a little longer. But. IG and Cloud9, they're going to be taking it chill. I think we're waiting for the next Roshan, I think, no doubt about it. It's just BB pinged out. What they're doing, they're just swapping up their items here. Marana has picked up a Butterfly, Mjolnir, Manta Style, and Black King Bar. Ferrari's got 1,800 gold, so even if he dies, he does have a buyback. He could try and jump back in to snatch up Rapiers not picked up, because everyone's so full of items. Uh, he could also try and... Back for a last ditch attempt. We'll have to see. So far, Ferrari's twin rapiers are the seventh and eighth rapiers bought this international. How many by Havos? Whisper, whisper. But I don't think Havos has bought any rapiers. And I don't know if he's gotten the opportunity. Navi's games have been he's pretty itching. decisive one way or the other. Never mind. He'll buy one. Uh, he'll buy four in one game, maybe, maybe. No, that that number hope. correlation was not intended. But no. Ferrari, TP to the middle lane push out the wave and a lot of creeps die too fast we can't even get attached to them and cloud nine they're gonna be fine with the ancients how much more to the rush timer uh the extra time did the clock just come out or did i miss it uh no so you're just we're just about to get the the right, time. Robot it's get a short clock. one there we go 38 seconds and i think there's gonna be a fight for this rush and whoever takes it might be winning this game I just wonder who's even going to take it at, at this point. Uh, nobody on C9 can really get too much value out, and... Even Mega Creeps, I think, at this point, are not a win for C9. And I think that also factors into why we're not seeing Eternal Envy just harassing the barracks. They know that they actually have to win a fight uh, to be able to close out this game. I can swallow Ancient Apparition. Oh, heck, someone! Aoi! Aoi somehow getting caught out, and he is gonna take a fall just before the Roshan respawns. He does have a buyback if they need to fight it, and they have all the tier 2s ready, uh, the TP2. Uh, but still, I don't know how he got spotted out there. I think the creep wave spotted him, and he got hexed, so... Aegis is up. 
Yeah, and lane's not even a great position for C9, so they're gonna scramble a little bit. Eternal Envy does have a replicate available to be able to get over to the pit, but then jump in middle lane. My light die. Oh, Shiva's got. He's getting caught out. He. He's trying to farm on the enemy side of the map, and I'm getting really worried here for Cloud9. Pylai die. I know he wants to get things done, but if he dies here, it's gonna be really tough for them to actually secure Roshan safely and still hold on for that buyback. Cloud9 making me worry a little bit, but hey, that was a tactical feed. Look at that, Eternal Envy distracts them with his mental illusions and they steal Roshan. So, okay, Crisis averts it. They will have the Aegis, they will have the cheese, and Eternal Envy does hold on to the Aegis this time. I think this is the right course of action. And now it just, uh, this, well, it's up to them to actually shoot down the Ember Spirit before he runs away. Uh, it's one of the, th the tough things about dealing with an Ember Spirit in his base is he can just put a remnant in his uh, fountain and if he gets into a pickle of any sort, he can just hit the magic button, jump all the way back and heal up and come back into the fight because he's so close to the battlefield. So, so Envy has no boots. <laughs> Who? Envy has no boots. Oh, yes. It's, oh, yeah. which, is, which is definitely worth pointing out at this point. We'll, yeah, we'll see. It's cloudy for sure. I'll have to see uh, what happens here. Yeah, 65 minutes in. Cloud9, are they going to throw this at the back of two Ferrari Rapiers? We'll definitely have to see. The arrow lands a five second one onto Luo. He's going to take a Mystic Flare. Will there be follow up? Yes, they will. See, now pops his now pops his VKB by Eternal Envy chasing him down. Does have Aegis. There's a zero blade. Oh, we could have gone for the shotgun. Oh, he messed up there. And he will miss an opportunity to kill the hard carry of IG. And well, Sing Sing's arrow nearly was a Hail Mary there for Cloud9's uh, predicament. And IG will back off and they'll TP back to farm Ferrari. Does have a remnant there, so gotta be careful. And that was Envy's 10 second BKB as well, so Luo's BKB is gonna be off cooldown first. And IG, this could be an opportunity. C9. Holy smoke. Oh god. I'm getting anxious. This game did not need to come to this point. It did not need to come to this point. If Envy had picked up the Aegis, give Mirana the cheese, they would have been hightailing out of this game and, well, resting for the next. But now, they sit uh, in a very, very tight spot. Now, Pylite Dye gets himself hexed up. Pylite Dye, please, I know you're tanky, but not this tanky. Barrel Strike to safety. There's going to be Shiva landing onto Luo. Luo links him up. Is there going to be a follow-up fight? We can zoom out this fight. Here, the BKB coming up. There's a Veil onto Razor. Bone 7 looking for Luo. They hex him up. There's going to be a chase on the Razor. Maybe. It's on the comes in here. BKB up. There's a Divine Rapier. Chops him up. Uh, chops up the Mental Illusions. Double damage. Ready for more fling. This is a good opportunity to do some damage. Concussion shot will slow them down. The arrow. Oh, if it does land on the Ferrari, that could be pretty huge. And the Envy, down to 600 health, will have to jump to his replicate or go home. He does walk really slowly uh, due to his lack of boots. But 16 and 19 now. IG keeping Cloud9 on their toes. This game basically comes down to whether or not. Rapier 3 could be possible too. Yeah, but I, but I think this game comes down to whether or not somebody on C9 can find Ferrari and lock him down. They've got a Blink Dagger on AOI so they can Blink Silence. Uh, they've got a Blink Dagger, of course, on Pilot Die, so a Blink Bar Strike could always catch him out. Uh, and, of course, Bone 7 could hookshot in and look for the side device. If any of that happens, C9 should be able to pounce on top of him, win the fight, and then we'll be able to take the Rapiers and, and close this game out. But if IG can get the perfect positioning on the fight, uh, then C9 could be in some pretty big trouble. And so much of this is now coming down to vision as well, knowing if you can jump we'll with see, the blink. Uh, if they blow some big cooldowns in that. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, looking for the chain. They, they, well, it's a good bait because Pilot Eye is known to do this kind of thing. And they, they think, oh, maybe that's the real guy. And now they're getting awfully close to Ferrari. They could find him out if they catch him. Please don't do it, Pilot Eye. Alright, he's not gonna do it. Ferrari is gonna escape to safety. He was this close to losing his rapiers. 16 and 19. 16 to 19. 68 minutes in. Here comes Cloud9 with a ferocious push. They're gonna go straight for Rack, but Gliss is up. It's a little envy. Could get a caught out. He's a pig. He's now a watery pig. There's your rabbit. Just the ice blast as well. Bone 7 catches in on Tron. There's gonna be a hex up here. Ferrari wants the target there. He will save him. So Tron saves his hard carry. Morphling almost revive. Sing Sing. Do they focus on Rex or do they go for the kills? Yes, they are. Rappy sends a constant tight on the kidding caught right out there. YYF out of Ravages. Ferrari coming in with the big crit. Not enough damage it seems. And there's your second Ravage holding it for once. But no, Envy is just going for mega, mega creeps right here. Pylite's eye 
Is he gonna get it? Pilot there with a triple kill. There's your last range rex. Ferrari with the triple kill. He will keep them in the game. Just for now, Morphling buys back into the game. This is where it's come down to a very, very fine line. Everyone on Cloud9 buys back. They know Ravage is down. They know that the Ice Blast well, the Ice Blast is up, but Ancient Apparition is dead for a while here. Chuan, does he have buyback? No, he does not. Buying a casual chainmail does prevent him from doing that. No, it's actually Razor's chainmail. But Cloud9, they're buying it. They're just going to ram themselves onto that Rex. But at this point, if they lose enough lives and Ferrari doesn't die, it could endanger their life. Uh, it could endanger this game. I know the Range Rex has very little health left on that, but Ferrari with Rapiers could hold on to Mega Creeps, technically. Yeah, and Tidehunter is also fantastic for holding on to the Mega Creeps as well, so I don't even know if... Again, I'm going to say it, that I don't know if finishing off that Rax is going to be a win here for C9, but looks like they're going to just continue sitting around. They don't have all of their extra lives anymore. They've used the buyback. The Aegis is gone. There is a Cheese in Eternal Envy stash, which he could probably give to someone if anybody had inventory space at this point. And again, just to reiterate, all they have to do is really find Ferrari. Okay, he's gonna use his BKB, he's gonna wave on in and just bash the thing down. Yeah, that's the right call of action. Zips on out, it's a little envy with a touch of red will uh, send IG into Mega Creeps, but Ferrari, like we said, with double rapiers, easy hold. I mean, he still has, they can still farm up BOTs, send a party right down the middle lane, make sure that the side lanes are out far enough, and then BOT in and potentially look to go. Though the play that C9 would probably respond with would be to BOT to the cl closest creep wave uh, and just head straight for the throne. So I, I we're think in a bit of what Cloud9 right can now. do now with Mega Creeps on is that Ferrari can't push. So they just sit back, enjoy, uh, enjoy their time, their free space, and just farm up to your buybacks on all your heroes. It's the boring way, it's the safe way. Wait for ages, pick it up, and go man, man up down the mid lane. I think that's the way they could beat IG technically uh, or force IG to action. Could be possible. But we're 71 minutes in base cap. I don't think it needed to be going to this uh, late of a game. But Cloud9, they want to play it safe. I think that's going to be the best uh, best choice. Yeah, we'll look at buyback status. It's Ferrari with the buyback. I'll use the buyback. The rest of them, nope. Yeah, and Ferrari has now gotten to the point where he has a second courier alternating between Battle Fury and MKB. Yeah. Battle Fury to clear out the waves, MKB to deal with the butterflies uh, on. C9 heroes, but at this point I don't think he's going to be seeing a whole lot of C9. Like you said, it looks like they're going to continue to stick with playing the safe, and I think they have to at this point. They're going to have to continue farming up, try and grab some more items, though I don't know if they have much more room to grow, and I'll try and get another Aegis, maybe some more Maybe Tron can pick up the carry roll now, with all the yeah. gold left on the map, but if, I, I didn't know that Ember's, uh, I mean, I didn't know that Divine Rapier is now a GIF. Do you know that? I don't know, the Divine Rapier has a... Oh yeah, yeah. that it has an animated yeah. inventory icon. Yeah. Rapier, Mjolnir... Radiance. Yeah. Radiance, yeah. Need more gifs. Ferrari, 6,000 gold on him. He can die and then try and get another Rapier for a comeback play. But it's gonna be tough with Mega Creeps. He probably won't be leaving the base. He will be on guard duty. And he probably needs a BKB on his courier now uh, as well, so he needs to have buyback available, have a BKB on his courier that's hanging out behind him, because C9, the play that they're looking for is actually seemingly just to buy mass hex and have everybody look to blink at Ferrari and hopefully somebody uh, gets the lockdown, so... We'll, we'll have to see. And if Ferrari has that BKB, he can always bring it off the courier, pop the BKB, put it back, swap it out for his damage items, uh, and then go to town with 10 seconds, so... This game is getting very, very weird. It's coming down to things that are you know, it's not, not what you would expect. That's the but thing. Yeah, it's, it's still definitely not over. The Mega Creeps mean very little at this stage, a aside from just lane pressure and IG not being able to lead their base. Yeah, uh, Envy, I guess, could wait for... Oh, patch, 37 minute. Game uh, we're we're going to be padding out the average a little bit here okay. as well. We, we might actually get to cast the longest game in uh, NTI4. Mm -hmm. Yay us, yay us. But Come on, we could what? just cap out for some double damages, man. And do you, 
and do this. Are, are you not enjoying this game? This is this game is ridiculous. This um, game is ridiculous, like, but uh, I don't know. You're too, you're too much of a C9 fan. You're too, too much stressed. of a C9 fan. It's just so much stress for me. I think Lumi would agree as well if he's mm -hmm. not casting right now. <sighs> uh, well, and it's also a shame because they could have won if they had Aegis on that last uh, on that that fight that one fight before Ferrari got a second well, rapier. I, I mean, again, it was just getting getting caught out by the. By potentially not seeing the hex on on YYF, that and turned out to be a game changing pickup. It's gone for a Milstrom. Help out push. Help. It'll be a cool interaction. I don't I don't think I've ever seen this item on Razor before. Uh, more lightning the better. Yeah. Well, AUI 4.6k up for him. No, the longest match so far had been 74.15, and now we are in the longest match of the tournament. There you go. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We won. One at life. Maybe Sanking. What do you think? Maybe Sanking could just go hexes. I think all of them should just go hexes. A third rapier. Okay. You need your backup rapiers. I mean, if you die and you lose your rapiers, what are you gonna do? You need you need extra rapiers. Oh, the all in play is real. The all in play is real. All right. Uh, what's he gonna swap it out for? I think Battle Fury would be the best choice here. But ages. It's such a bad time to pick up the third rapier just as Cloud9 claimed their fourth ages of the game and Morphling somehow still saves the space for himself to buy uh, to hold the ages. I think that's really smart. Still no boots. <laughs> yeah, he's no boots. So whatever. whatever man. Ferrari has no boots as well when he drops that uh, boots for, drops the boots for a rapier. So I think it's gonna be quite the man fight coming up very so very shortly. So long Cloud9 don't get any rapiers of their own, I think they should be okay. Actually, they can. Actually, they can. At this point, it doesn't really matter. You just need to win one fight. Or lose one fight and it's over, so... Oh, Envy. Immediately, Ferrari backs down uh, from the fight. The, the Cloud9 gang gonna be marching up the Radiant Jungle. They have wards. They know. And what will EE do is the question. D9 just looking for a way in, but they're they're playing very blind aside from creep vision. IG playing back really smart, very defensively, back behind the tier fours. They have glyph available, and we'll see if this is gonna be the time for C9. Manta chip, manta chip. This is the manta chip. You think Sing should start deploying his own as well. Just shoot at the tier fours and make a throne rush a possible thing. Oh boy, how much is this damage? Does he have the third rapier equipped? No, he, he picked up a Monkey King bar. He is just... He's just backing down, man. He's manning down. Ferrari needs to man up. Pick up that third rapier. And see that damage skyrocket. At this point, he has about 1,200 base damage. And... When he you know, crits, just, just casual. When he crits, I think he will do close to 3,000. No, 2,005, maybe. 2,005, 2,006. Not the best at math, but around that area, uh, around that ballpark, and he could very easily clear teams uh, with this. So we'll have to be very careful here on Cloud9. I don't think NB wants to stick close to his illusion. And yep, Sinkly joining the illusion party. Uh, we're just going to be chipping away at your tier 4 towers. It's a death by 8,000 oh, splashes uh, at this point. And yeah, Cloud9 sieging the base from the outside. Pilot die itching on that trigger finger. Please don't do anything funny at this point. Uh, it will be a sad game to throw. I think we already had one rapier throw today on the Fnatic Mouse game. So we'll see if Ferrari managed to bring this back. 3,900, 3,008, firing some casual concussive shots. Oh no, an arrow landing onto Luo. He will lose his life. Instant buyback incoming. Or nope, does he have a buyback? No, he does not. Oh, Luo, he might have just cost his team the game there, catching that arrow with his two hands. Sing Sing's arrows. Oh no, the Hex and Envy! There's Hex and Envy. One chop! He goes down. The Ice Blast gets uh, brought down. Will there be an instant BKB? No, he gets hacked. External Envy needs help now. But a Bow Strike lands on all three. Ferrari is now a pig. He's in a lot of trouble. Tron saves his hard carry. But now Ferrari facing up against Sing Sing. Sing Sing is going to be his evil twin. And Ferrari is forced back to the well while Eternal Envy bashes away at the fountain, at the fortress. Radiant Ancient is under attack. A zoning Bow Strike keeps them in the well, they are going down. Cloud9 are taking this game after a long, long stalemate. And Ferrari will not turn this game around, not even with three rapiers. And well, that was some um, incredible, well, I would say luck, accuracy. Shoot arrow, hit arrow, man. Analyst Death, this is back to you guys. And for you guys on our stream, 